Some of Anji's best setups arise from a mid-screen throw into Shitsu. But in the corner, Shitsu completely whiffs, a problem that can't be solved even with manual timing. This spacing is fundamentally different from that of a throw in the mid-screen, and if we don't want to give up stage positioning by throwing opponents backwards, we'll need to find some new strategies. We can leverage the use of off-the-ground or OTG hits to set up advantageous situations. If you want recommendations on what to do without any of the underlying theory, these are my suggestions. For safe pressure resets, use Fujin OTG into hop into close S. For hard reads against mashing and reversals, with a backup plan to throw the opponent, try 5D into Suigetsu no Hakobi. And if we want set play that closely mimics mid-screen throw, 5H OTG into Shitsu is our best bet. For everyone else who wants to understand why I recommend these options, what normals are best for setting up which situations, and the criteria I use to evaluate every single possible OTG setup I could think of, stick around. This is Millennium, and this is my quest for the best corner throw OTG setup. Let's start off with the method of evaluation. There are three things in particular I think are important. First, a setup is better if it's consistent. This means it works on the majority of the cast and is executionally lenient. That means no delayed gatlings, no manually timed special cancels, and no precise dashing. I want to be able to essentially mash the sequence out with no regard for timing. Secondly, the more universal wake-up options a setup can catch, the better. If we're able to perform some sequence of moves that will cover most of mashing, invincible reversals, throws, backdashing, and jumping, that's much better than a setup that can only catch one. And finally, I want to be able to threaten a strike-throw mix-up. Close S and throw are some of Anji's best moves, and forcing the opponent to guess between these is a situation that is overwhelmingly in our advantage. If that isn't possible, being able to limit the opponent to just blocking is second best. For each setup we talk about, I'll be giving it one of three ratings. Avoid is for setups I simply would not do. These ones are too difficult to execute, too inconsistent, only work on specific characters, are completely outclassed by other options, or are way too one-dimensional to realistically apply. Situational is for setups that are usable on occasion. Perhaps they're fantastic at targeting specific wake-up scenarios, or can be applied to throw off or knowledge check the opponent. And finally, useful is the rating reserved for the most efficient strategies. These ones cover a large portion of wake-up options, let us attempt a relatively uncontested strike-throw mix-up, and are the ones I believe we should do the majority of the time. With that said, there are some moves that can be immediately disqualified. Shitsu, Kararin, and Karafantos do not hit OTG whatsoever. 5P, 6P, and Ko do not OTG on about half of the cast. As such, all of these moves are given the avoid rating and won't be discussed further. The rest of this video is broken down into sections according to what specials we'll try to set up. We'll start with perhaps the four most important. OTGs into no special, OTGs into Kara Fantos, OTGs into Suigetsu no Hakobi, and OTGs into Shitsu, as these have the most flexibility. Then, we'll cover the more unusual follow-ups. OTGs into Kara Rin, OTGs into Kara Nagiha, OTGs into Kara Isokutobi, and OTGs into Charged Fujin. Without further ado, let's begin. With OTGs, too much of a good thing can actually be a problem. 2P, 2K, 5K, Close S, and 2S all generate so much frame advantage that almost every single follow-up will whiff as the opponent is still invincible. In most of these cases, without precisely timing our follow-ups, the only thing we can really do is 2H and hope the opponent gets counter-hit. Despite 2H and 5H providing us plus 14 and plus 9 frame advantage respectively, they both leave us too far away, posing the same problem as before, where our follow-ups are essentially limited to just far S without precise dashing. 6H is an unusual looking OTG as we end up right beside the opponent at minus 2. Deceptively, this is just outside of throw range on most characters. This frame advantage ends up being a big deal, meaning we can't actually punish any wake-up options except throws and backdashing. All eight of these options should be avoided. 
If you're amenable to dashing, an OTG into dash close S will be all mashing, throws, jumping, and back dashing. The most consistent setup I've found for this is with the OTG 2K, which is by far the most lenient to close S compared to any other OTG, creating our first useful setup. Fujin P is the first theoretically situational button. Because the fan hits meaty, it's about plus 9 instead of the usual plus 4, and will catch any wake up mashing, throws, and jumping. It spaces out such that reversals won't hit even if you do a follow up attack, but you need to commit to not pressing in order to punish, which is how you would beat them anyway. Fujin P does not catch backdashing. The problem with Fujin P is that its hits can't be converted into a wall break without meter, and there's too much distance to reliably threaten a throw. 5D at plus 8 is extremely similar to Fujin P. Mashing, throws, and jumping can be caught with 2D and even converted into a wall break. We also have the option to catch backdashing with 2S or 5H. It still does lose to reversals. And again, because of this distance, it's a little too dangerous to attempt a tick throw, even after a 2K or a 5K. As such, 5D is essentially a better version of Fujin P, so Fujin P will be relegated to a void, and 5D will remain situational. A similar scenario occurs with 2D and Kara Nagiha. After a 2D, a follow-up 5H will trade with 3-frame wake-up attacks and catch both jumping and backdashing, though only backdashing converts into a wall break. Of course, this loses to invincible reversals, and at this OTG distance, it's quite dangerous to run in for a throw. Kara Nagiha, also at plus 12, is more flexible given that we're close enough to close S. This counter hits mashing, throws, and clips jumping. However, close S is not active enough to work on backdashing. We could replace our follow-up button with 5H to achieve better wake-up coverage, but at the expense of worse follow-up pressure if it's blocked. As Kara Nagiha is essentially a more flexible 2D, 2D will be moved into a void, and Kara Nagiha will remain in situational. There is only one setup I would consider to be useful in this class of OTGs, Fujin Isoktobi. At plus 7, a close S will counter hit mashing and throws, and will also catch both jumping and backdashing. It's also close enough to threaten a throw if we delay the throw slightly, or just tick throw from close S or 2K. The only option it loses to is invincible reversals. Next up is OTG's Intakara Fan Toss. Unlike earlier, this fan toss does not hit meaty, but we can use OTGs to set it up more safely than in the mid screen, placing ourselves into a position to close S. 5D, Fujin P, and Fujin K OTGs are automatically put into a void because we can't cancel into Kara fan toss. I've also disqualified 6H, as cancelling into specials from the same place in 6H's recovery is very inconsistent. Unlike previously, the move we use to set up the OTG has little effect on what wakeups we can catch. Throws and backdashing on wakeup can be caught and converted into wall breaks, but jumping and reversals universally punish attempts to set up fan toss. Aside from that, only specific mashing will catch Kara fan toss that is, relatively fast moves with high vertical hitboxes. Most 5Ps, 2Ps, and 6Ps go-to moves for mashing will whiff, letting us combo into close S into a wall break. The choice of OTG comes down to the distance from the opponent upon landing. 2H and 5H will land outside most characters' throw ranges, while 2P, 2K, 5K, close S, 2S, and 2D will all land within it. Which to use is a personal decision, but given that it will never catch jumping, I would rate the strategy of setting up Kara Phantos as a whole as situational. OTGs into Suigetsu no Hakobi come in two varieties. The first is simpler, as hard callouts against retaliation of any kind. The best way to set this up is uniquely from moves that don't actually cancel into spin. 5D, Kara Nagiha, Fujin P, and Fujin K all generate enough frame advantage to essentially completely cover up the startup of Suigetsu no Hakobi. For all other moves except 6H, minimum spin will not actually catch mashing. Of these 5 options, 6H, Fujin K, and Kara Nagiha can be thrown on wake up, while 5D and Fujin P cannot. 
This immediately knocks 6H, Fujin K, and Kara Nagiha down into a void. Opponents will always be able to jump out uncontested, and backdashing doesn't do much. If they simply block, our spin puts us in range to attempt to throw the opponent. 5D and Fujin P in this situation function essentially identically, and both are inherently a situational setup given the need to commit to a read on an attack. The second variety has a little more depth. It uses minimum spin as an extension of the OTG to essentially waste time while closing in on the opponent, leaving us in close S range at a very slight frame advantage. 5K, 2S, 2D, and 2H are really the only appropriate candidates for this, as they are all plus 2 by the time minimum spin ends. All other moves are neutral or negative. But even out of those four, 2H is the only one that spaces out such that most throws will whiff, allowing a close S to counter hit, which otherwise gets punished by throw due to the spacing of the other three. A close S will trade with any 5 frame buttons and catch back dashing, but jumping can only be hard called out by a 5P6P Fujin combo, and reversals will beat it straight up. The flexibility of the setup, however, comes from the possibility of holding spin down for longer, meaning opponents cannot blindly mash their 5 frame attacks every time, and forces them instead to jump. This, in turn, can be adapted to by jumping and air throwing, and the situation devolves into a coin flip of whether the opponent will jump or not. As interesting as this is, its inability to truly cover all wake-up options means that I have to rate 2H Suigatsu no Hakabi as situational, and all other cancels into spin as a void. Unfortunately, we'll never be able to recreate the power of mid-screen throw Shitsu in the corner, but we can get close. Ideally, we want something that catches as many wake-up options as possible and gives us flexibility post Shitsu to continue pressure. Anything that's not a normal, including 6H, is out of the question as Shitsu's startup is too slow. 2P, 2K, and Close S can catch many wake-ups, but are either neutral or negative after Shitsu lands. 5K and 2S are very similar. Both will catch wake-up mashing, jumping, and backdashing. The unique part about setting up Shitsu is that even in the corner, it's able to catch many reversals. Both of these also provide two frames of advantage after Shitsu is blocked, and the only real difference is 5k leaves you slightly closer than 2s does, which has some matchup specific nuance we won't get into. 2h Shitsu gives a much larger plus 9 frame advantage after Shitsu lands at the cost of no longer being able to punish jumping. Though many characters will be unable to completely jump out of the situation, some, like Milia, can. Post-block, a far S will trade with 3-frame normals and catch everything else except invincible reversals. 5H Shitsu is the most ambitious, providing a massive approximately 13 frames of advantage. This is so much that a far S is a true block string. However, unlike 2H, 5H Shitsu completely loses to jumping on almost every character. All four of these options are good for different reasons. 5K Shitsu and 2S Shitsu have amazing wake-up coverage. 2H Shitsu lets some characters jump out in exchange for better follow-ups. And 5H Shitsu has the best post-Shitsu pressure, only losing to jumping. As such, I would rate 5H Shitsu as situational and 5K Shitsu 2S Shitsu and 2H Shitsu as useful. Beyond here, we enter strictly situational or worse territory. Setting up Kara Nagiha simply does not work. There is no normal we can do that will time Kara Nagiha to catch any wakeups, and using it without cancelling into it is too slow. Avoid this. Setting up Kara Hop is extremely dangerous. It is almost always punishable regardless of which normal is used to OTG, and I would only even think about attempting this with metered setups, which are out of scope for this video. I would avoid it. Trying to set up Kara Rin is a little more interesting. Obviously, not being able to cancel into it is out of the question. It also universally loses to wake up throws and invincible reversals, but for the first time, can punish blocking low. 5H is one of the only options here. It counter hits all 5 frame mashing and catches both jumping and backdashing on wake up. And in the rare scenario you need to counter hit buttons faster than 5 frames, 2S, 
2H, and 2D Kara Rin will all be able to, at the cost of no longer being able to catch backdashing. The danger of setting up Kara Rin is that there's no possibility of a follow-up if it's blocked. And in fact, if we can't make it safe without meter, we'll eat a massive punish instead. I'll begrudgingly rate 5H Kararin as situational, but I would have no complaints if we never used it. Our last setup involves Charged Fujin. Just like with Suigetsu no Hakobi, we could use this in one of two ways. We could attempt to set up the Fujin itself, or attempt to use it as an extension of normal Suigetsu no Hakobi setups. Let's start with the first. Like most things, OTG cancelled into Charged Fujin loses to Invincible Reversals. The best wake-up coverage we can get is off 2k, close s, and 5h, all of which counter hit mashing, throws, and clip jumping, but with on backdashing, though a follow up Nagiha will actually catch the backdash if it's done immediately. The problem with this is that even if we use the counter hit buffer technique to get a Nagiha on normal hit and a block or hop on counter hit, we then drop the combo to convert the clipped jump. As such, we don't actually manage to cover all non reversal wake ups. Like with 5H Kararin, I'll rate 2K Close S and 5H Charged Fujin as situational, but I think Anji has a wide enough variety of stronger setups that we'll almost never need to use these. Using it as an extension of a spin setup has many of the same pitfalls that spin on its own does. 5D or Fujin P into Charged Fujin can be jumped out of. While we can counter hit badly timed throws, it's still susceptible to correctly delayed throws. I actually think this situation may have some interesting niche uses, but on the surface, there's nothing about this setup that beats options 5D or Fujin P into minimum spin can't, so for now, I would avoid this. A quick note about safe jumps. There are a few around, like ones that involve Ko or backdash instant air dash jump H. These are, without a doubt, great. However, the manual timings involved in getting these consistent are out of my executional abilities and so I don't do them, but they would definitely be useful if you could. If you're up for spending the time to lab them, do it. And if not, feel free to use any of the easier setups I've talked about today. The last thing I want to discuss is purposefully introducing inefficiency into our OTG setups. This is less applicable if we just stick to ones that catch most wake-up options, but there are times where we may want to use situational setups, whether it be to hard read mashing with 5D Suigetsu no Hakobi, or to generate some frame advantage with 2K Kara Phantos. The choice of OTG can give away what we're trying to set up. If we only ever 5D into spin, our opponents will learn to jump on wake-up every time they see it. Or if we only ever perform 2K into Kara Phantos, they'll mash a button with a high hitbox after seeing a 2k. So it's important to perform different follow-ups out of a given OTG, even if it's not the most efficient. 2h and 2s are probably the best general purpose OTGs. Both can set up Shitsu, Spin, Kara Rin, and even Kara Phantos in a generally advantageous way. And if our opponents are adapting to our choice of OTG, we'll need to adapt too. That's the whole video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found something new that piques your curiosity or found something that you want to integrate into your own play. If you're interested in continuing to learn fighting games with me, hit that subscribe button as I'll have more for you in the future. And until next time, this was Millennium.